So the PFP as more than just a digital image is a fundamental premise that Yuga was built on. And that means that you now are owner of uh, your own PFP and you can do with it what you want. And it also has community elements to it, social elements that make the experience something that has never happened before in, uh, in the digital space. And that evolution hasn't retrenched. If anything, it's actually gone faster than, than, than people have imagined. And you have, you know, the prices of, of the NFTs is, in my view, something that just happens with new technology. Just like I mentioned Amazon, internet stocks go up, internet stocks go down, internet stocks go up. And then eventually, as people start migrating to them, they all skyrocket. We're in the same evolution right now in the NFT space. Uh, I'm Daniel Legre. I've been CEO of Yuga Labs uh, since April 1st of this year. Um, before that, I was uh, president and chief operating officer of the gaming company Activision Blizzard. And then uh, before that, I was uh, 16 years at Google and uh, responsible for a lot of our Google's international expansion, particularly here in Asia Pacific and Latin America. Um, and uh, Yuga Labs is a leader in the NFT space. We have the largest Web3 community um, that was built on um, some iconic new um, NFTs that were launched. One is the Board Ape Yacht Club. Um, and then Derivatives, which was the Mutant Ape and the Kennel Club. And we also own CryptoPunks and MeBits. So from an overall global perspective, we have the largest portfolio of NFT brands and the largest Web3 community attached to it. I was, uh, I was very amazed for a company our size and our youth you know it's only a two-year-old company and uh and relatively small in terms of number of people in the company the number of projects and activities that they have been able to uh, launch and build is pretty is is incredible um you know the scale at which Yuga Labs has been able to grow as quickly as it has is really unique, um, not only in the Web3 space, I think just in the, in the digital space altogether. And what I found when I first became CEO is uh, a, an incredibly, not only committed workforce, but a committed community. And this is a community that was deeply global. You know, these are board ape holders, mutant ape holders, crypto punks, and mebits holders uh, everywhere around the world. And every city that I go to, I meet a community member or a group of community members. And it's uh, it's it's incredibly uh, humbling, but also exciting to see how passionate the community is about continuing to build out everything that, that we're, we're doing and we're doing together. And um, that was a surprise to me, a very pleasant surprise. I thought I was going to come into, uh, you know, business challenges. And obviously there's things going on in the, uh, in the ecosystem. But the community strength is unparalleled. It's something I've never seen before. Yeah, sure. Look, uh, at Google, in the early days of Google, you're absolutely right. You know, uh, people loved everything that Google did. But we also realized that you were one click away from the competition. Um, in, in Activision, uh, you have these loyal players and, and loyal influencers who love the games. And that's incredibly powerful. Like when you have a community member that deeply cares about the experience, dedicate hours and hours in the gaming experiences that they have and the affinity they have, whether it's Call of Duty or World of Warcraft or even Blizzard, at the holding level, um, if you tap into that, 
it can be incredibly rewarding from a business and an engagement perspective. That's what I see at Yuga Labs. You've got community members who have a vested interest in continuing to grow the connection. They, they self-identify with their PFPs. Sure, yeah, because I've got mine, mine right here. <laughs> um, and they want the community to stay together and, and connected. And that level of passion to community brand building and community connection is uh, to, to a factor of <laughs> bigger than I've ever experienced at, at, at Activision or Blizzard and even bigger than I experienced in the early days of Google because they're in it with us, you know, to build these unique experiences together. And I think that is what makes Web3 so special and what makes Yuga Lab so, so unique. Yeah. So if, if you look at, you're right, in terms of the total number of gamers that exist versus the, the total number of NFT holders or participants in the industry, forget about Yuga Labs, you know, it's, it's obviously much smaller. Um, but we're in the early, early days of developing these new NFT experiences. So uh, I mentioned earlier, if you look at gaming, for instance, even though some of the most popular games have millions and millions of players, from a commercialization perspective, the number of players that really matter is very small. You know, it's just a fraction. Right? So you may have a million players, but the ones that matter may be 20,000 or 50,000. Those are the ones that generate the, the bulk of the monetization in the game. Uh, so if you look at our demographic in uh, Yuga Labs, it's, it's the equivalent of having all whales. You know, whales in, in gaming means the ones that are like the most passionate and the biggest spenders. Um, so the, the spending affinity that we have at Yuga Labs is very, very high, comparable to some of the largest games that I ran at Activision. But I don't look at it that way. You know, the way I look at it is how do we ensure that the community gets value in their experiences and their connections, which they do, and then how do we build experiences to be able to expand it? And the reason why I am taking Yuga Labs into new experiences like gaming is we're essentially opening up the window of new potential participants so that they can experience what Web3 means. And once they experience Web3, it's hard to go back to Web2 only, right? Where you can have digital ownership. Uh, where you can actually participate in the economy of a game. That's why we launched, for instance, back in February and March of this year, a game called Dookie Dash. And what we did is we made the game available only to our NFT holders. And they were given a token. And with that token, they could play the game or they could sell the token and have someone else play. And what happened? 60% of our holders played the game. 40% sold the token, and we had new entrants come in. So I, I know I'm giving you a long, long answer to your question, but what's what's really happening is you got this core community, but you build experiences and you open up the window and new people come in. And it's still relatively small in the grand scheme of the internet, you know, Facebook numbers. Um, but you're at the beginning stage. And once the new members start experiencing it, the, the gaming companies have multiple ways of making money, right? Uh, and at the core, what they, what they look at is I've got a captive audience, and how much money can I squeeze out of those that captive audience based on the IP that they've created? You know, so it's a it's a very very lucrative model. The way we look at it is, we want the Web three players in our experiences to be able to participate in the economy as well as enjoy the experiences. And there are circumstances where you have in-app purchases where if you want to go to the next level faster, if you want to get certain certain rewards that you can actually pay. So what, what we did with Dookie Dash and what we did with uh, with Heavy Metal Forge. 
Those are the two games that we launched to date. So there, there are uh, in-app purchase models that we have in our Web3 game experience, but what makes us different, you've touched on it, is when you go from Web2 to Web3, you also now have the gamers can participate in the economy of the game. Whether you sell your token, uh, have others play on your behalf, or uh, the progress that you make and the rewards that you make, you can actually sell them or trade them. And that's something that you can't do in gaming. So it's essentially breaking down the walls the commercialization walls in gaming so that not all revenue flows from the consumer to the to the company. It's consumer, company, company, consumer, consumer, consumer. And you have like this three-way way of participating in in the economy that I think is much more powerful than just a one-way consumer to gaming company. The reason why I joined Yuga Labs is the founders are fundamentally committed to long-term value. And long-term value means communities that stay connected and find uh, unique experiences by being being a community member. Right? Notice that we we're called the Board Ape Yacht Club. Right? We're not the Board Ape Yacht game or the Board Ape Yacht you know, NFT. It's all about being a club and a club member. And that in and of itself means that we're focused on long-term long -term value and long-term experiences. So the, the fundamental way that we look at it is that we look at what do we think our community would enjoy they would benefit from and that strengthens the community. It doesn't necessarily strengthen our balance sheet, but it strengthens the community. And the experiences that we've built, for instance, with Dookie Dash that I referred to earlier, we made it so that the experience was easy to understand. The value exchange of experience to what you could get out of it was crystal clear and that we focus more than anything on the entertainment value of it. And sure, there were commercialization models around it, but at the core, it had to be fun. If you have a game that all you want to do is just uh, make money off the, the player, you know, you're, you're not going to be around very long. Um, so the and it, it's such a basic thing in gaming. Make it fun, and then figure out how you're going to monetize thereafter. And that's what we did with Dookie Dash, and that's what we're doing with Forge. Listen to you. You have a zero follow Twitter account. There was a question raised back in '97, '98 uh, to an internet entrepreneur, and they said. Do you think Amazon going into more than just selling books is a mistake and you're going to go bankrupt? And Jeff Bezos' commitment to building Amazon as a global e-commerce platform paid dividends because he, he saw the value of it. Um, your question has a, an assumption in it similar to the Amazon book going beyond books and into some something broader than that um, and that, that that's a mistake or that that was a short-lived experience and you're just going to retrench back to NFTs only being a PFP and and that's it the reality is there's two components that are fundamental in the space to understand. One, Web3 in and of itself is a social platform. And that platform is evolving and will take time to evolve. Just like I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, you had dial-up and then you eventually had broadband. But anyone who understood anything about technology would see that dial-up, all the problems in dial-up were short-lived because the tech was going to evolve to something where broadband and then you're going to have tremendous experiences that you're going to have with it. It's the same thing that's happening in Web3. We know that the experiences of ownership, interoperability, and uniqueness of uh, the experiences that you can get in Web3 solve a lot of fundamental issues of the evolution of social, of gaming, of music, of video, of art um, and 
the technology will evolve and it's evolving very fast. So the PFP as more than just a digital image is a fundamental premise that Yuga was built on. And that means that you now are owner of uh, your own PFP and you can do with it what you want. And it also has community elements to it, social elements that make the experience something that has never happened before in, uh, in the digital space. And that evolution hasn't retrenched. If anything, it's actually gone faster than, than, than people have imagined. And you have, you know, the prices of, of the NFTs is, in my view, something that just happens with new technology, just like I mentioned Amazon, internet stocks go up, internet stocks go down, internet stocks go up, and then eventually, as people start migrating to them, they all skyrocket. We're in the same evolution right now in the NFT space. Interesting, or that you want to develop further in terms of adding utility to that? Sure, yeah. Look, uh, there were, you asked a question of uh, what, what was it like being a new CEO to the company. Some of the things that I thought were uh, basic are, are real, but then there's other areas that hadn't even occurred to me, right? So I knew that the community was important. I just didn't realize the incredible power of having the IP in the hands of the community and what they can do with it. You know, for them to build made by apes businesses where we now have 900, uh, you know, uh, holders who are actually building businesses off their made by apes. And that's digital businesses and offline businesses. That I never thought was going to be as vibrant as it is now. Uh, and that has nothing to do with prices of the NFTs or anything. It's like, yeah, you know, people see this and they identify with it. And they go, yeah, I'm going to make a, a water company out of it. I'm going to make a clothing company out of it. I'm going to make a, uh, uh, a, a, a coconut company out of it. Um, that was unexpected to me. And that's a non-metaverse value, right? But here's a, a thing that I, I, I found really uh, eye-opening. Every city we go to, there's community holders and they are always connecting and always meeting in person. And then when it goes to offline, sorry, online, what they do is they go on Twitter, they go on Discord, uh, you know, they go on Telegram, and they connect that way. But it's a very uh, fractured way to communicate. But what's that, what's that telling you? It's that telling you that these communities, these Web3 communities, want to stay connected. So if you build these, the, what we're, we're building with other side, which is... A, a platform that brings, got a phone call. You've got a platform that builds not only experiences, but a connective tissue where these communities can connect globally as well as locally. That is really fundamentally different from what exists right now with Web3. Web3 is all over the place. Right. So if I want to connect with you, you may give me your Telegram or a Twitter. I follow you on Twitter. Blah, 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 blah. An ideal scenario is if I know you're part of the community, I know you're connected, I know you're passionate about it. Let me go to one place and everything that you and I ever interact with or exchange ideas, new business ideas, or you tell me about a game that you're playing and I want to participate and I go into it. That is what we're building with the other side. And that is the next evolution of NFT ownership towards digital connectivity. And then you can think about all the other business models that come out of it, whether it's gaming experiences, whether it's shopping experiences, whether it's uh, K-pop uh, connection with our community, like all those, those vibrant experiences uh, will evolve out of having this one common platform. Then you end up having a significant